Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Joel Hunter, host of Power Talks, empowering you through the voice of truth. On today's program, this is a special edition, uh, Father's Day edition, and so we have three very different fathers here. Uh, to my immediate left is Haki Nkrumah, that's a West African name, isn't it? A beautiful name, isn't it? Um, and he was the founder, is the founder uh, and president of Young Fathers of Central Florida. We're going to find out more uh, of what uh, they do, but he has a, a basic degree um, in um, urban studies and psychology from New York. He comes from upstate New York. Um, served time in the military, has completed studies in social work um, at uh, Murray State University, um, but has written several books, and we'll get into those later on. Um, we thank you for being with us, Hawk. Uh, hockney, uh, hockey. You, Sorry, um, this is Chad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I probably won't mess that one up. It's also an African name. Is it? <laughs> oh, it African is. Country, yeah. <laughs> it's a country. African country. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Chad. Chad's an old buddy of mine, uh, who's not old, uh, but um, has been in ministry for a long time uh, with me and uh, is presently the executive director of Slingshot, which is a microchurch incubator uh, for those people that are not um, really um, totally into um, the institutional church. But he's also a real estate advisor with Engel and Volkers um, and um, a, a, a wonderful gentleman fa farmer father. I'm gonna, we're gonna get into that. Um, and then Jim Gibson, again, uh, old buddy of mine. Um, he he uh, works with Rep Services, which is, curiously enough, a playground installer and producer and installer. Uh, that's what they do. Um, but the reason that I asked Jim on, and he came on in very short notice. Thank you, Jim. You're um, uh, he just was available, and so we snatched him up. He has also has a, an incredible uh, family, um, and his wife Tammy and he um, had just kind of, as the rest of us, stumble their way through surprises, and they do a very good job. Um, so let me start this special um, edition <clears throat> with, uh, let me go to you uh, first, uh, Haki. What, tell us about your organization, how it got started. Well, our organization started here in Orlando in 2006. Um, it was out of a need that I saw a lot of young men um, were isolated, ignored, and they were fathers. And responsible fatherhood has always been important to me in, in my life. So I knew that a lot of the young men needed services to support because most of the services available for teen and young parents were um, geared towards mothers. So I knew that um, we had to do something in terms of starting programming. Um, we had no money, but we, on faith and um, thinking positive, we started developing programs, a dad-to-dad -dad mentoring program, matching an older father with a younger father for a one-year commitment, because a lot of our young fathers and a lot of our communities um, um, have not been raised with a, a positive father figure. Mm -hmm. um, so the uh, mentoring program was very, very important. Father support groups, parent training, um, because when you look at the infant mortality rate, um, the deaths of, 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 of our children, newborn 18 months, a large portion of them, fathers are young fathers. Yeah. So we, we knew that to stem that tide, um, and you know, because we call ourselves child advocates through responsible fatherhood, mm. Um, so we just knew that parent training was very, very important. Um, uh, we have our um, prevention program called Gents the Gentleman Program. Mm -hmm. That's a character and etiquette development program mm -hmm. for 10 to 13 year old boys. We don't want to see them in our fatherhood programs. Mm -hmm. We want them to have mm -hmm. lives mm -hmm. where they're not young parents. But um, we just knew that there was a need of responsible fatherhood and helping young fathers realize that, um, that, that they're not terrible people. They're not yeah. horrible. There's no need to abandon your child. There's no need to run from your responsibility. Yeah. But we just feel that we can't just tell them these things, that we have to support them and we have to help them yeah. to get through. Because we all know parenting, there's no manual for yeah. it. Yeah. Um, you're not going to be perfect at it. There's yeah. going to be problems. So when you have an adolescent's mind and their parents at the same time, 
that's that's a difficult combination. So that's why I've dedicated my life to supporting these young men and helping them to be responsible so that they can raise their children and start running from their responsibility. That is admirable. And Hockey, you now have a number of um, cities around the nation that are engaging in your program or, or, or duplicating parts of your program, Yeah, right? we just recently um, incorporated um, in the state of Florida, um, young fathers of South Florida. Okay. That's Miami, West Palm Beach area. Uh -huh. We have um, young fathers of Metro Atlanta. Um, um, there's a young father initiative in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, they've gotten so large, they changed their name from young fathers of Santa Fe to um, fathers of New Mexico. Wow. So, um, and 60% and of their participants are Native American. So yeah. um, we, we work with all fathers, yeah. it doesn't matter what religion yeah. and and even faith. Yeah. Um, we have some guys come to us, they might be Muslim, yeah. another guy might be a Catholic, yeah. another guy might be an atheist, yeah. but the bottom line is that they have to take care of their children well, and, and their responsibility. None of us feel prepared. I mean, mm -hmm. none of us. Jim, you, uh, were you prepared to be a father? Uh, <laughs> not as well as any of us. <laughs> you know, I just, um, no. Uh, you know, every day I wake up and, and I, Ask God to help me be a good father that day, yeah. um, because as uh, many of us know, we're fathers forever, uh -huh. and uh, and it is a responsibility, yeah. as Haki said, and one that you can't abandon or certainly shouldn't. Yeah. And so, uh, you now know, you have you have a, a, a unique family because you've got a, what two biological children? Yeah, yeah. We have Tammy and I have two biological children. And, and then four adopted children, and um, four African American, four African American adopted children who started, who were brought into our family as foster children, uh -huh. and um, and and then they lived with us through the adjudication of their family cases for such a period of time that that it became obvious to us that they were permanent members of our family. Mm. And and so they've uh, they've stayed with us their entire lives. Yeah. We have one son who came into our life at the age of one week. Our original um, adopt our original son Thomas uh, came to us at four months. And he's 19 years old, and and the Lord willing is going to be graduating from high school in wow. a few days. That's so awesome. uh, he's been with us his, his whole life. We have two sibling groups, uh, Thomas and his sister Valencia, mm -hmm. and and then uh, Malcolm and his brother Amarion. Yeah. Um, so they have a connectedness there yeah. that is biological. That's great. And uh, that's and important, great. we thought. Oh, that's fantastic. Excellent. What what was the dynamic between your biological children and your adoptive children? Uh, Tammy and I had always. Uh, uh, for the life of our children, their entire life was was they were exposed to ministry that was oriented toward families and therefore other children, mm -hmm. and so being around other children seemed natural. Being around yeah. children of different socioeconomic status, different uh, nationalities, different colors, was a natural thing to them. Right. So when when um, when when we became foster parents, they saw themselves as brother and sister to a foster Great. child Great. and they helped in, in everything with that with the tasks and so yep. on and so forth and so it was it was like we had this constantly evolving family that that over years became this group of six yeah and uh, yeah. so there's no difference in Tammy and I in the way we look at our children and treat them that's very obvious to each of them yeah and and there's no difference in the way they treat each other. They they love and fight and argue just as if they all came out of Tammy's yeah. womb, and, yeah. but they didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, so, interesting. Chad, let me get to you. Uh, the <clears throat> one of the reasons I wanted you on uh, number one because just so much fun to talk to. But the, but beside that, you have a a, a different. Uh, family availability than most people, and that is <clears throat> you have decided on um, <clears throat> being a gentleman farmer. Mm -hmm. um, you, ha you have very unique animals, uh, and for much of the history of this country, mm -hmm. kids were around animals all the time. Mm -hmm. 
Um, <clears throat> much of my growing up, I grew up in a small town and people had chickens in their backyards. I mean, it's, that's where their supper came from. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to go out and get a chicken and we'll have it for supper. <clears throat> um, but how did you decide, uh, number one, to um, do this gentleman farming thing? You, you already had children. Mm -hmm. um, and I know at least your oldest and your youngest um, loved um, animals. Charlie's more of a computer guy. Mm -hmm. uh, but but how did you how did you decide and, and how does the interaction with those animals? Um, I mean, if you've got a dog or a cat or a parakeet or something, that's you know, there's some analogy here. Mm -hmm. How does the interaction with the animals have an impact on the kids? Yeah. Well, that was. The kids were a major reason that we wanted to get the little farm in the first place for for two reasons. Um, one, just there is so much uh, allergies and battle against processed foods and disconnect from the food source mm -hmm. that we eat. And mm -hmm. we thought, boy, we should just help our kids, at least in a little way, understand where food comes from and and you know, mm -hmm. so they collect eggs and we eat them and they sort of make some of those connections. We milk the goats, we have dairy goats. Mm. And then we just, this past week made cheese and, yeah. you know, eat the cheese. And, and so we wanted that connection. Um, the other is, as anybody knows with young kids right now, the battle against screens and social media yeah. and, you know, and so we just thought, man, what is the least technological thing you can do and farming is kind of about it yeah. and and so they're sort of required to be outside uh -huh. uh, because everybody has chores <clears throat> and so we like that sort of responsibility you have to get off the screen to go out and yeah. do your part yeah. and and so it's been a lot of it's been a lot of fun yeah. and they, they don't you know everybody likes it and doesn't like it at various times yeah. if you're into something you're doing sure you know going out to be with the animals they have a hugely therapeutic mm. impact mm. too just as, yeah. as stress comes up and you do your chores and you're out with the animals you know yeah amazingly Put things in it just yeah. you know it, it yeah you know and i think more and more of that's being discovered yeah. of yeah. oh wow you yeah know, yeah just spend time with these funny little chickens or funny little goats and and your whole stress level just you know comes down Haki, what, when you we've talked about stress levels and and i'm and i'm thinking about these young fathers that mm. that we need not, a program with you yeah, yeah that's what I, i'm yeah. saying I, it, it just it, it really is something to behold i've been to his house and and the, and first of all the animals he gets these chickens of all colors in there and they're and they're you know but it's, it's so it's fascinating visually but um but i'm thinking of none of us no matter how no matter what our history felt actually prepared to be a father when we became fathers i mean a, there's you said there's no there's no definitive manual mm -hmm. on okay do this next because every kid's different right. um every relationship with the mother is different mm -hmm. um and and so um when when we talk about stress the, the the young men that join your program um have to have some degree of insecurity or stress or something mm -hmm. how do you make them feel like you can do this you know um, um what are some of the initial lessons you teach them about being a father what it just is to be a father mm -hmm. Well, a lot of our young fathers have a lot of stress because when they're young and the, the, um, a lot of them weren't raised with a father figure or father in their household. But a lot of fathers we have, no matter what nationality, um, they have a lot of anger mm -hmm. because their father might have abandoned them. Mm -hmm. I had this one 14-year-old father. I asked him, um, how did he feel to be a father, that he was getting ready to be a father? He said, I don't care about being a father. I'm going to deny the baby anyway. I said, well, you know, why is that? He said, well, my father abandoned me and my mother and I hate him. And, mm. and he was just very, very angry. Mm -hmm. And I said, so when is the child due? He said, sometime in September. I said, you're going to go to the hospital? No, I'm not going to do any of that. And so he was with his friends. They were boasting. You know, they were boasting him up. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to deny the baby. So I said, well, I said, so I know that you care about this child. He said, no, you don't. You don't know me. 
I said, well, I know a lot of guys. I talk to a lot of guys. And when I ask them when a the child is due, the first thing they have no idea. Mm. You told me exactly when that child was mm. due. I said, he said, oh, you tricked me. Yeah. You know, you tricked me. <laughs> I said, no, I didn't trick you. You know, and I said that I know you don't want to be like your father. Mm. You know, I know you don't want to be like him. And he just kind of like settled in because I was letting him know I understand where, mm -hmm. his, where his anger was coming from. Mm -hmm. So a lot of guys just have insecurities about themselves. They don't know their own sexuality, a lot of them. Mm. They don't, they, they're still trying to figure things out. Sure. But at the same time, they're you know, 14, 15 year old fathers. And we had a father um, last year in 2017, 12 year old father, 12 year old oh mother. Goodness. So, and when I looked at those young kids, I mean, they looked like they were 10. Yeah. Oh my and, but goodness. they had no idea. He had no idea what was going on. I said, how you feel about being a father? Mm. I don't know. I don't, I don't care. I mean, the cutest blonde, two blonde haired kids, you know, and they look like little babies. Oh my goodness. So a lot of them don't know themselves. Yeah. They don't know who they are. Uh -huh. And so they have a lot of stress. And that's why a lot of these young fathers abandon their kids. They don't want additional responsibility because yeah. they're not even taking care of themselves. Let's let's talk about how to build at least some kind of, if not mentoring, at least support system, some sort of allies for fathers, you know, um, or what you had to kind of, Jim, when you were when you were, were going to become a father, um, did you have? Any source of encouragement, uh, any other males in your in your life uh, that said, you know, I'll walk along with you or anything like that? I, I was particularly blessed because of my parents okay. and the childhood. Mm -hmm. I'm older than these gentlemen and I'm closer. In fact, you're only slightly older than I am. So I've been, I remember the 50s uh -huh. and because that's, that's the year I was born. Mm -hmm. And so I, I enjoyed mm -hmm. that period greatly. My parents were were good parents and they taught us how to, they taught us uh, Midwestern, what I would call Midwestern values of love and respect and hard work. Mm -hmm. And 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 so I, I my father um, was like all fathers, I could point to you deficiencies if I'd like to, but but my father did a, did a great job along with my mother of teaching us to be good parents. Mm. And, and so I have two brothers who are younger than I am, I'm the oldest. And, and we are, so at my age, my baby brother is 60 and, and conversations with he and the middle brother always end with, I love you. Yeah. And that's sweet at that age that we're still that connected, even though we don't see each other often because yeah. one is still back in Illinois, one's in Oregon. Yeah. And, but we talk regularly yeah. and that's wonderful. Good. And that's so you had us. family, you had a family kind of reinforcement. Strong. That's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. My, my father died when I was four. So yes. I, I, uh, I knew be how to be better to be a grandparent than to be a parent because uh. my grandfather was kind of my, you know, male figure. Mm -hmm. um, Chad, what about you? When you were when you were coming into fatherhood, um, who did you have kind of walking alongside of you and and you know giving you, if not encouragement, at least you know they were there for you if you if you needed to ask for advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, in terms of presence, uh, Mandy, you know, Vernon, uh, right. Mandy's dad, Vernon was was really present and I looked to him. Even my, my own father was a great dad. I mean, mm. he, he was he was fantastic. And um, but he would always say, I'd ask him, Dad, what do I you know, what should I do about this? Or I don't know what and he'd always say, What's Vernon think? <laughs> and I think he recognized that Vernon yeah. was here and present yeah. and, and you know good and so I'd say, I don't know, I'll ask him. I think that's a good idea. And I'd ask, you know, Vernon, what do you think about yeah. this? You know, and and yeah. so, but you know, go ahead. well, the other thing that I was going to say too is <clears throat> Vernon was present um, by his own presence, but he also invested so significantly in this community mm -hmm. that um, when you, you know, that, that there were so many other people that also then were subsequently invested in me and our yeah. children. Yeah. And I think it taught us a pretty significant lesson about the way that community works to, to yeah. come around folks yeah. that, you know, that are, that are having kids. And so we would, 
you know, we, yeah. we still, my, my kids bump into people and they go, hey, you're Vernon's grandson, aren't yeah. you? You're yeah. Vernon's grandson, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. And, and then because of his investment in them, they, they in yeah. turn invest in, in our kids. Yeah. Hockey, so if you don't have, um, and 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 I got to say, Jim, what you had is getting more and more rare um, yeah. in this in this yeah. culture. Yeah. Um, but if you don't have a natural kind of go-to mentor person or a model that you've learned from, or an immediate support group, does it? I mean, what does your what you're trying to create? Is there kind of a okay? We're all in this together community. Is there? Are, I mean, do they do they build relationships with other guys who are struggling with the same issues? How do they yeah. how do they get support? A lot of our our um, guys that go through our programs as teens, they as young adults, they mentor in and work with some of our younger guys. Uh -huh. um, we have gentlemen in our in our program um, um, that came to us at age 20, 21, they're 27, 28 years old now. Mm -hmm. So that's, a, that's a, a, a way to help these guys get a support system because a lot of guys lack support system. Yeah. And I just want to get, if I, if I, if I may, yeah. I just want to get back to what, what Chad does and you um, spoke of um, stress level. Mm -hmm. um, Things that Chad is doing, like the the, uh, the farm, inviting young men out there to do those type of things, you would be amazed how happy. And it's like when you take them on a the bus, they're quiet when they're going. They're coming back, they're chatting, they're talking. Really? And, and um, I'm, I remember the solar bears. We would take some guys to yeah. the first time to see ho hockey. They, it's hockey. That's ice there. It's ice, and they, you know, they, they couldn't phantom how they were like, because a lot of these kids never been skating, especially these kids in Florida. Yeah. So it's like those stress levels. That's why I can't wait to talk to them afterwards. <laughs> but you know, that support system of um or 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 the act, or activities that they do, that's whether it's fishing, whether it's you know um, feeding mm -hmm. you know um, animals or just experiencing being around, you know, more than one goat. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that I'm trying to tell you the way they feel when they leave these activities, you can just hear it on a bus. That's you great. don't have to say anything. They're just talking. And you remember that? Did you see that coat? No. Did you see this? Did you see that? Oh, and you and you fed. You know, you you squeezed the milk out. Or, you yeah, know, yeah. they'll yeah. start asking That's things awesome. things like that. But the support system is very is very very important. Yeah. So and the community is important. Getting the community involved. Yeah. And I was surprised by the um, my first couple of books I wrote. You know, it was nothing big. I didn't expect to make money out of it or anything. Uh -huh. I just wanted to help people start a dialogue. Yeah. And they can read. I made the book very simple. Yeah. And people can read. Wow, I didn't know that these guys were going through this here. Yeah. Um, a lot of the fathers, young fathers, go through things that we have no understanding of. So support well, you, system is important. The, what do you think is the most important thing you can say to a young father or to any father um, what's the most important thing they can do to be there for their children? I mean, what, what do the children need from their fathers more than they need anything else? Time. Time. Mm -hmm. Very, Time. Yeah. Time. And, and I'm glad to be on the panel because what Chad does is, is amazing. And being a, 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 a father of six kids, four adopted kids, man, having him as a mentor, it'll blow guys, blow yeah, them out of the water. Yeah, yeah. Look what this man is doing. Yeah. This is the responsibility yeah. he's putting on. Yeah. yeah. And that's the main thing. But we, we want guys to know that time is very, very important. Taking kids to McDonald's is fine, but that's it. That's why our guys, we require them to have library cards, mm. all our fathers. Mm. Because a library card, you could take your kids to do activities, educational, doesn't cost any money. Yeah. And the kids can interact with other kids. So time is just the most important right. thing because just the money part, most kids, we all know, we have, we have children. Yeah. We get them a toy. They, yeah. that, that toy, yeah. they forget about it in a, a yeah. week. Yeah. They're not thinking about that. But that time you spend with your child, they, they'll remember yeah. that for long, okay. long periods of time. Jim, one minute. Yeah, God has been so wonderful to guide our life the way he has because... I've been able to mentor fathers like you've been dealing with on a daily basis. And because Tammy and I have lived in the inner city for 20 years. Mm -hmm. And and so fatherless children, 
children with no father image and everything are the boys I'd hire to work in my yard just so that they could be around me, yeah. the boys that yeah, I hired so they awesome. could learn how to work with a tool because yeah. they'd never had anybody show them how to yeah. work a tool yeah. and everything. So that's, you know, it's been great to be able to model the behaviors to these young yeah. men over the years in our neighborhood, just on our block, just being who we are yeah. and, uh, well, and everything. Thank you for what you've so. done. So. Chad, I'm going to have you back, buddy, many times. You know that. <laughs> so, but we're out of time. I hate this. Uh, I, I want to thank you uh, and all of our panelists. Haki, this has been fascinating. Uh, thank you for doing what you're doing. Happy Father's Day. Yeah. And, and, and Chad and Jim, just thank you for your lives and for your friendship. Um, those of you who are fathers who are watching, thank you um, for how you've loved your kids and... Um, and if your mom's watching, encourage the fathers. Uh, thank them for the time that they've spent because, as Hockey says, time is the most important thing we can, we can give to someone. Um, so we've had a conversation here. Remember that these discussions are just that, discussions among us. But we'd love to see you continue the discussions at home and go one step farther. Get involved because when power talks, you are empowered through the voice of truth. See you next time.